Hi everyone, I'm Trevor with North Valley Search and Rescue. Today we're going to explore another video in our Rope Rescue series. As always, this video is for use in conjunction with professional training for North Valley Search and Rescue within the scope of our SOPs utilizing our equipment. This video is not a comprehensive training package, but rather a small component of training and should be used under the guidance of a qualified professional trainer. There are many methodologies and avenues to achieve a desired outcome, but paired or performed incorrectly can result in injury or death. All ratings discussed are with new, fully rated equipment under perfect conditions, which never happens. Used equipment, time, UV exposure, use, application, or any other condition or alteration will change the load capacity. All ratings discussed are approximations and are simplified for your basic understanding purposes only, not to calculate the actual loads or forces. We are glad that you're here with us today and for a quick reference back to this video and others of ours, please click on the red subscribe button below or just below that, the add to button and create your own playlist. Might I suggest naming one SAR. So let's kick into today's video. In this video we're going to look at setting up a full system for a lower and a raise with clutches. Um, this is Todd, he's going to be helping me out today. And what we're going to do is go through each of the positions, set it up, and to show you how a complete system looks. So a low angle system for us is defined as where the tendons that are on the litter are able to support their own weight with their feet. So when they're not able to do that, in other words, when it gets pretty vertical, that's a high angle system and that is set up maybe differently. We have some different considerations. So we're going to dive on into how to set up a low angle system. First thing that we're going to do is find ourselves an anchor. We happen to have this truck right here and we happen to have some great anchor points. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to use clutches and both Todd and I have a clutch and we're going to go ahead and secure these to our anchor. As always, I want to make sure that my anchor is strong enough for the loads that we're anticipating. And not only is it strong enough, but the direction of pull is appropriate for what we're doing. Um, these clutches, uh, there's a couple of videos on how to inspect this. Everything that we're using today has been previously inspected, um, but there's an inspection and a use video which is linked in the description below. So we've got these uh, set up and we're going to go ahead and thread these through with our rope. So I know that our tenants might be wanting to set all this up, so I'm going to give them a whole bunch of rope and then I can go ahead and weave the rope through and get it set up. I'm going to do a functionality test, so I'm going to put this in standby mode. In standby mode, I cannot pull out on the load, but I can pull with my hand. And if I put it in stop, then I can, again, not pull with my hand, but I can pull limited amounts with my brake hand. And if I pull it around just for functionality test, this is not how you operate this. I'm going to pull on the load strand and I'm going to notice that it works and I'm going to hit the anti-panic function and then I'm going to reset it. I'm going to do it again and I'm going to let go and make sure that it stops both times. Okay, Todd's and mine both worked appropriately so we're going to put them back into the stop mode and we're going to tie these things off um, to signify that they are set up and that they are locked so visually somebody from away can see. Okay, so at this point Todd and I are going to swap spots to um, cross inspect what we're doing. But before we do that, as the individual on the main, I've got a couple more things that I need to pay attention to. So for me, I am going to be the line that we also set up the mechanical advantage for the raise. In which case, I want to set up, I know that I need a single pulley that has, potentially has a, um, a swivel on it, a prussic cord and a carabiner that's going to be used as my tractor down the road. Um, I'm just going to hang that up here. You can hang it wherever, but ideally if you set things on the ground, they have a tendency to get kicked or get tied up in things. So we can connect them to an anchor, whatever you have set up, find a way to put them up out of the way. I also, since it's only Todd and myself, and we're going to be raising a load here in just a little bit, and he's got to manage that belay line, it's just going to be me hauling, so I might need to set up a 5 to 1, so in advance, I know that, I'm going to go ahead and grab another carabiner um, and a double shiv. 
um, that I can put on and swap out to make that the tractor. And then I will use a pulley here um, on the becket of the clutch. Very, very important. If I use a pulley on the becket of this clutch, it needs to be a swivel pulley. Um, it can't be a fixed plate pulley. So I've got those two things set up and this is all for the edge line. So we're going to go ahead and cross inspect um, our work. So when I cross inspect it, um, I'm going to go ahead and untie this so that I can uh, do a functionality check again, make sure it's set up appropriately. First, I'm going to look at the anchor and make sure that it is secured appropriately. I'm going to look at the carabiner and make sure that it's locked, uh, make sure that the orientation of the clutch is also appropriate. Then with it in stop mode, I should not be able to pull out on the load strand. I can move it to standby and I also cannot pull out, but I can pull in with my brake hand. Then I'm going to come around, and again, this is not how you operate this. This is for functionality tests only. I'm going to pull the load strand and pull the lever back, and I'm going to have it go back into anti-panic mode, make sure it stops. I'm going to reset it, and I'm going to keep pulling and release it forward and make sure that it stops. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put these both back into stop mode, and we're going to run these back through and tie these off. So again, somebody from far away would be able to know that these are set up and that they are ready to operate with potentially a loaded line. Okay, so we're going to set those down. Um, the next thing that we're going to set up is the edge line. And this is for our edge person, which might be our team lead. It might be a different person altogether. Um, what I have here, I'm just going to utilize this bar. Um, it may not be rated in this case, uh, but for demonstration purposes. So I've got eight mil cord, which is sufficient for what we're gonna be doing. On the end, I'm going to tie a figure eight on a bite, and I'm gonna dress it, and I've got enough of a tail to make that good. In this situation, I'm going to let the crack in the cement simulate a rollover or um, the knuckle of a cliff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to chuck it out just past there. And I'm going to bring it back so that it comes just on this side of that crack. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to attach to this carabiner right here. So I'm going to set up a figure eight on a bite and I'm going to connect it to it, and I'm going to make sure that that carabiner is locked because it is a screw gate. The rest of this I can take and store out of the way, and my goal with this is so that when I come out to the edge with a carabiner, and if this were to be clipped onto a harness, I could come up to the cliff, but I can't go over. So in this case, I need to adjust slightly so I can adjust at that end, I can adjust at this end. In this case, I don't want a longer tail. It's more for me to trip on. So I'm going to suck up just a little bit here. Oops. I want this strand. All right, so now I've got that shorter, I've still got that dressed, and my carabiner's locked, so I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. I come along, and I'd be able to take this and clip this in, and I can come up to the edge of the rollover and still have this clipped in. I'm also going to take a Prusik cord, and I'm going to wrap a three-wrap Prusik around this line, and you might be able to do a two wrap prusik depending on the type of material. This particular um, material, this is a hollow block. It's very, very grippy and very sticky. Um, so I could get away with a two wrap prusik. And what that does is that allows me to maneuver along and still be secure as I move no matter what the length of this is. So at this point, 
I can turn this over to Todd to do a full inspection. He's going to start at one end and work all the way to the other. So making sure that the anchor, the anchor is secure, the carabiner is locked, the knot is tied appropriately, and that the knots are tied appropriately here, the hitch in that case, and the carabiner is all set, ready to go. So I can set this right here, ready to use for the edge attendant. Okay, get rid of the rest of that rope. And I'm just going to take this and because it will ultimately get in our way and I'm going to tuck it in back out of the way. Okay. That was what I'm looking at for the edge tenant. So a couple of considerations. One is that is it going to get in the way of my other positions? I need it to not be. Um, second is the length of it that it takes me up to the edge. Uh, but it doesn't allow me to go over, so it's an edge restraint. Um, and finally is that I have some sort of comms, whether I have visual comms and I can communicate between my two ends, so my attendants down on the low end and my main and belay operators up here, um, or whether I have radio comms if I can't see everybody, but that person is typically the one that helps to direct traffic. Now we're going to look at setting up our attendant positions here, and this can again all be done by different individuals. So if we all if we all came up here and we had three attendants, we had two operators, and we had an edge position, they could all be setting these things up concurrently, um, which is why we threw this excess rope out here. Um, but in this case, it's just Todd and I setting this up. So here we are. So we're going to each take these ropes and we're going to get them set up for our litter use. So we're going to take, for me I know that it's two and a half long uh, poles and then I'm going to take a figure eight on a bite and Todd's going to do the same thing. Okay, And we've got figure eights on bites and they're at different lengths which is great, um, absolutely fine, doesn't really matter. We're going to take these, we've got two carabiners I'm going to clip them through in different directions so the gates are opposed. Todd's going to go ahead and thread his through there. I'm going to push that out of the way. I'm going to take mine and put it in there as well through both of the carabiners. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock those off. And lock that off. And then you can see that that pulls. So. I'm right now inspecting Todd's knots. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Todd's going to inspect mine, two, four, six, eight, ten. And he's looking to make sure that the carabiners are opposed, that they're locked, and that they go through all of our strands for our bridle, which was already preset and ready to go. Okay. So in this case, we have the tails, which we're going to take. And on the tails, I'm going to tie a figure eight on a bite again. One of these will be used for the tenant down at the very, very end of the basket. So I can give that a chuck down there. Um, and the other one is going to be tied to our patient. And so we're actually going to just cross right now and take a look. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. So I just inspected. And I can just take that and throw that along the edge. Okay. So we are all set up. Todd, you agree that uh, we're set up here? Good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is come over here and get ourselves set up as attendants. And with attendants, we've got we need to have a primary and a secondary connection. So we each have a prusik loop. Um, so Todd's going to go ahead and get his set. We're simulating that there would be three of us, two at the head and one at the foot. There's nobody at the foot. We're not going to set that up for demo purposes. But for us, here's what we've got. So we have a few different ways that we can tie this. One is I can take this and go pull that through, pull the knot through as a girth hitch. And with that girth hitch, I'm gonna take this and I'd be able to connect that to my chest harness so that when we stand up, the weight of the litter and the patient are on the harness and we're not having to hold them up with our hands. That's not what we wanna be doing. We wanna be able to hold on and lean back. Um, now you'll notice that mine is longer than Todd's here um, because maybe I'm taller or maybe because I want it longer, um, but I have a couple different options if I want it shorter. So one way to make it shorter is do what Todd did, which is just connect them at the same length, which is a basket carry. Um, if I also wanted to take this strand, go around and do a two wrap prusik, 
then I can do a two wrap cross stick and you'll notice that with these particular uh, length cross sticks that mine and his are now approximately the same length. So that would be able to connect to our harnesses. So that's our primary connection because this goes around the rim. So there's a metal uh, tube that goes around the outside which is connected to my bridle which is connected to my main and my belay lines. So we're going to set those out of the side. And then we're going to grab these Purcell Prusix. And the Purcell Prusix, these, the reason that we're going to use these as a secondary is just in case we have to send these lines to get to the top and we have to do so independently. This allows us, especially in a vertical environment, to wrap that around our foot and to be able to step up the rope, utilizing this as our secondary attachment point here to gain on that progress. So that's why we're going to use this. So this has a single loop on one end and a double loop on the other. We're going to take the single loop and we each are going to grab one of the lines, um, main and belay, and we're going to do a three wrap prusik. And we're going to dress it up. And so what this does, this allows me to have a connection point to my, for me, the main line and for Todd, the belay line. And I can make this adjustable so I can snug it up a little bit more if I want it to be snug. I can make it longer if I need to step away, like if I need to move out of the way because uh, my patient's vomiting and we're going to rotate them over. Um, but I can also slide this up and down. And a functionality check is that when I pull in either direction that that doesn't slide up and down the line. You'll notice that this is smaller cord than the rope and it's smaller than 8 mil cord um, because it's uh, we've got two strands on each side so it meets the weight rating and I would be able to again clip that to my harness to have my primary and my secondary attachment. So at this point Todd and I are going to swap positions and inspect what we each just did. So I'm going to start with the um, the Prusik loop, it goes through both. The carabiner isn't locked, but it has to go through my harness first anyway, and it looks like it's done appropriately. He's going to make sure that's wrapped around and can't come undone from the tube. Um, this next one, making sure that the Purcell Prusik looks good, that it's uh, snug um, and it won't slide, and that up here it is a wrap three um, Prusik, and I can slide it up and pull in either direction. So at this point, We've set up a main, a belay, an edge, and our attendant positions all within just a few minutes to be able to operate a lower and a raise for a low angle system. We hope this video was helpful in understanding this component of our rope rescue system. Thank you all for watching the video. Remember to subscribe below to have quick and easy access to all of our videos. We look forward to seeing you in class and out in the field.